Hi everyone! This is a series about the OpenVINA DL Workbench, which is a web application that allows you to easily profile your model on various Intel hardware architectures. In this video, you will learn how to import a new model and a new dataset into the DL Workbench to further profile the model and experiment with it. Once you install the application and launch it in the browser, you firstly see this Get Started page where you can find active configurations. As it is the first run, there are no active configurations. There is the version displayed, the logo, and the download log button. You might need it if you face any issue running the DL Workbench, then you can simply ask a question on the forum and attach the log there. Ok, the main action here on the landing page is the Get Started button, which takes you to the configurations wizard. This is the page where you can see all available models, datasets and environments available on your machine. And there is the action button that starts an inference of the model. The first step is importing a model. You've got two options here. Import a model from the Intel Open Model Zoo or import a model from your local file system. In this video, we will cover how to import a model from the file system. Go to the original model tab. Firstly, select a framework. In this video, we are using a TensorFlow object detection model. So let's select the TensorFlow framework. Then we need to specify whether the model is frozen or not. This question is specific to the framework and other frameworks do not have such a field. In the tooltip, you can read more what a frozen model is. In our case, it is frozen. It was downloaded from the TensorFlow Open Model Zoo repository on GitHub. You can download TensorFlow object detection models from here, and we just choose the first one, which is SSD MobileNet V1 Coco. We have downloaded it beforehand, so let's explore. Here we have many files, so but what we are really interested in is the frozen inference graph.pb or the pipeline configs file. Actually, you can use other files to import a model. For instance, if your model is not frozen, you still can import it into the DL workbench. And in this case, you unselect is inference model here, and then you have two options, the checkpoint format or the metagraph format. And you'll have to provide several files of different formats depending on the type of the model format. Ok, as we've got a frozen model, let's select it, upload the file and then click import model. Now we see how it's been loaded to the server. Please note that the DL Workbench is a local application and the server is running on in a docker container, so you don't really have to worry about the security of your model. So if we go to the terminal, we will see that the DL Workbench is running on this machine. The second step after you've imported the model and it is on the server is to produce the intermediate representation of a model, which means to convert the model into the unified format that is required to run inference within the OpenVINA toolkit. Here you can see a lot of fields that you need to pop populate in accordance with your knowledge of the model, but actually they are not so difficult when you learn more about each field from the tooltips or the conversion tips available here. At this point, we see that we need to know the original color space, the pipeline configuration file, and the model conversion configuration. Now, the default precision value is FP16. Actually, the original model was trained in floating point 32 bit values, and it is available inside OpenVINA as well. However, it is recommended to use FP16 because it is supported on all hardware available in OpenVINA. Now we can proceed to the original color space. We need to know what the color space was during the training, and in our case it is BGR. Selection of this value means that preprocessing is happening inside the model, and the wrong color space parameter impacts the model accuracy measurement, so make sure you select the proper color space. Then we need to choose the pipeline config file. This is a file that is specific to TensorFlow Object Detection API models, and the DL Workbench identified that this model used an Object Detection API. For this option, there is a config file that was mentioned before when importing the model. So let's choose it. 
The next step is selecting the model conversion configuration file. This field is specific to some TensorFlow, Object Detection API, and YOLO models, and there are several adapters provided by OpenVINO Model Optimizer tool that allow you to convert a model using specific properties of the model. In this case, we're going to use an SSD model trained with the version 2, so let's select the proper file in the model conversion configuration drop-down list. Then we see that there is a single input called image tensor. The DL workbench identifies the input of your model, unlike running the model optimizer in the terminal, where you would have to provide a layer name to the model optimizer. If we open a secure open source online neural network visualizer called Neutron, which doesn't send the model to the server, but renders it in your machine, you can see the name of the input that is already correctly identified by the DL workbench. As you can also see, you can specify the input shape if you know it, but it's not required for object detection models. You can also provide mean and scale values that are used to pre-process input images. Finally, you can override outputs. In our case, however, it's a plain conversion, so you just have to specify color space, choose the config file, and proceed with the conversion step. Once you press convert, you're redirected to the wizard, and you can follow the progress of the model. The conversion process takes time, and it depends on the size and complexity of your model. As you can also see, when the model is being converted, there is some model information that we can review. There is a name, the type is unknown at the moment, so it is set to generic. There is a set of precisions, we have chosen FP16, but there's also the FP32 value, which is the input of the model, and also there is the size. Okay, once we have imported the model, the next step is to import a dataset. There are two options here. The first one is importing a dataset of one of the supported formats, which are ImageNet, PascalWalk, and Coco. You can read more on the structure of each dataset type in the tips inside this blog. The second option is generating a dataset in the ImageNet format. In case you don't yet have a dataset for accuracy measurement and calibration, or you just want to profile your model to understand how performant it is, just generate a dataset with images containing noise, like this one in the tool. So let's generate such a dataset. The generation is really fast, and once it is done, you see the status. Select the model and the dataset, and then select a target. On your machine, the environment list can be different. For example, if you have a Neural Compute Stick 2, which is also supported in the DL workbench, you will see it here. Let's select GPU. Here, this is our model, this is our dataset, and this is the environment where we want to profile our model. Now we can proceed to the inference. Now we are on the configurations page, where we can experiment with the model. On the top, we can see it, the table with all configurations. A configuration is a combination of a model, dataset, and target. We can see the precision of the model. The latency and throughput are not yet available, because the very first inference is going on right now, so let's wait a little bit. There is also the accuracy column. But as already mentioned, accuracy measurements are not available for configurations that use auto-generated data set, which makes sense because you can't measure accuracy without labeled data, and a generated data set is just noise without labels. Once the inference finishes, we can see the results in the chart below in the inference history table. Here is a dot representing the inference, then we scroll down and see the distribution of time spent on each layer. For instance, most of the time was taken by convolution, then goes through shape, and so on. Then there is the mean inference time graph with data available on hover. So the latency of our model is 8 milliseconds, and float and point values are 115 fps. Great! We've reached to the end of this video, where we've learned how to import a model, generate a dataset, and run a baseline inference. In our next videos, we will cover how to analyze profiling data, how to work with this table below, 
and how to visualize the model and compare performance across different targets. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.